Now I'm going to answer a series of questions about handling difficult people. I want to say this first. My teaching this morning is about inside you handle your negative thinking and feeling, not to be affected by them. Another aspect is how to handle the problems. But most of you are asking questions about how to handle the problem. That's fine. I will go to that. But this morning we talk about no matter how bad the situation is, that we keep calm, peaceful, and have the joy of the Lord because it's not worth it to take garbage from anyone. Even if they have serious problem, I have peace and then I can have wisdom to ask God for wisdom to handle the problem. So this morning we will talk about how even though when people are very terrible, now let me ask you, when people are terrible, does it mean that we become terrible? No. So the main point is we remain peaceful. And how do we remain peaceful? It's because I know what he, his negative words and his negative actions are all garbage. So I, want to take, I don't want to take it. And I, want, I believe in God, he can give me peace and give me strength so I'm not affected by all these people. But we ask God for wisdom, okay? So distinguish these two. Can you distinguish the two? First, is my inside, how can I have peace? And my thinking is positive that God can help me, I can overcome the problem. And then, then the second part, how to handle the, their problem. Okay, now I want to answer this question first. What is negative? This I already said, but negative means saying things that is not scriptural or that attack people or look down upon people. You are no good, you cannot do anything. God doesn't like you, I don't like you. So any kind of thing that makes people feel bad, doesn't build up people, and it's not scriptural, it's against the Bible. So all these are, ne are negative. So when people are negative, it's their problem. That's very, very important. And then we ask God for wisdom how to handle it. Okay, now I answer these questions one by one. One question I have is from a pastor who, uh, who asked me the question privately is that prior members in his church commit fornication. So what should he do? First thing, not to be affected by them. We keep the relationship, my inner in self. I know they have problem, but I have the peace. How can I handle the problem peacefully? Because if we get frustrated and then uh, once in a while we will talk about fornication and speak against them and then these negative words will make them more angry and more negative. So after we handle ourselves, we are peaceful and then we should have teaching. The teaching that in uh, Galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21, there it says the flesh the, um, the lust of the flesh are very obvious, like fornication, adultery, jealousy, anger. All these are all these are fruit of the of the lust. And then, what it says? What does it say at the end? And these people, those people who commit this, cannot enter the kingdom of God. Did you see that? Message yeah. cannot enter the kingdom of God. So we can teach in a church. Like this morning, I, last yesterday, I talk about the six fruits. If we don't have that, if the person doesn't pray, doesn't repent, doesn't turn away from his sins, doesn't obey God, doesn't serve God, even a small way that he doesn't serve God, that means there is something wrong. He cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. And he just thinks of going to church as some activity. He goes to church and he thinks that he can go to heaven. That's a false concept. So we have to teach that. And then we have to have the, 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 the rule in the church. When it's this established that someone is committing fornication, adultery, stealing, any of these uh, sins that you know he is committing without uh, repentance, that he cannot serve God. We have to bring him to repentance. And also, if we continue to do that, he cannot be a member. He has to be excommunicated. 
And some people say, well, then I won't have many members left. Well, if we don't have many members left, if these sinners leave us, that means this church is really full of people who are not following God. Then we have to start from zero. It's better to start from zero than a whole group of people who are all sinning, all committed to fornication, and they go to church and think they can go to heaven. So we have to talk to each one, but we don't talk to them harshly. But we ask them, do you believe God is real? Do you realize the sins can cause you to lose salvation? So are you willing to repent and turn away from this sin so that you can have eternal life? Do you care about eternal life? If the person cares about that, okay, let us find out how you can overcome the sin, step by step. Like when I talked about the lady yesterday that came to Bishop's home, then we said, okay, now don't have sex. Now some people might say that's too difficult. But if you have sex and go to hell, that's even more terrible. So are you willing to do that? So we have to keep asking, helping these people not to have sex before marriage. And uh, so when these people are not willing to follow, then they, has, they have to be excommunicated. And I think that Sinless Bench is a good idea. They can come to listen to the sermon. And I say they can still ask questions. But they cannot mingle with other members because they might have negative influence. And they, we can help them spiritually. Some people can follow up on them to help them spiritually. So, so that's the first question. Now, if, if I answer the question incompletely, if it's your question, you can raise your hand immediately and say, okay, how about this, how about that? And then you ask me, okay? And then the next question I have is, if my friend sins and affects me, what should I do? Let me tell you this. As Christians, we love all people. We care about all people. We try to help all people. But we don't make friends with all people. Because if they are committing adultery, if they are sinning, they are stealing, they are you know, uh, always talking negatively, they are always hurting people, we don't have to be their friends. What does friends mean? Friends are people you can talk about your own needs and then we can pray together. We can share together and encourage each other. That's friend. Let me tell you, many people regard me as their friend. They will ask me for help. But I don't necessarily regard them as my friend. When I have a problem, I don't go to them. I go to my wife. I might go to some pastors and discuss it. I will not go to many people. I mean, they. I can choose my friends. These people are good Christians, but it doesn't mean they are my friends. We should be careful about our friends. If these people can affect us and then, you know, make us uh, take away our joy and strength, then we should not be their friend. We should not be stay with them. So I, I say, we have to choose our friends and the people we mingle with. Okay. And then, now, one thing not to be affected. Another thing, how to help them is another thing. How to help them, it takes wisdom. And we have to discern now. It applies to many of these questions. Does this person take advice? Does this person listen to people? Is this person stubborn? When we suggest things to him, do they get angry? So we have to discern this person's people, people. If they are angry when you suggest to them, then maybe we have to really think twice and wait for the right time to do that. Because if they are a sinner and do not repent, you tell them to change, they might not change and they blow up and the worst thing will happen. So, so I, I'm saying we don't try to change everyone. Some people, we just try to love them, listen to them, gradually guide them to change. Some people, we guide them to change. We don't change them right away. Some people you try to change, they might beat you up uh, or they yell at you and get angry at you and then it's hard to communicate. Okay, now, the question how to get married. One person said the wife has left. I would say, if, you, if God hasn't prepared the person for you, it's better not to get married. Why do I say that? 
you marry the wrong person and you fight against each other, you yell at each other, you're unhappy with each other, it's worse than not getting married. Because when you're single, you can be praising God, loving God, filled with the joy of the Lord, and then you can serve God anytime you want. But you have a husband or wife who's yelling at you, uh, fight with you, and, and say negative words, it makes your life very difficult. So I have, I would say this, don't think that you have to get married. And the way to get married, first, ask God for guidance. Second, be a person prepared for marriage. Now many people are not prepared for marriage. Listen to me, what, what do I mean? Many people cannot handle the emotions. Cannot handle negative people. When you get married, the other person will get negative sometimes. So we have to learn to handle ourselves and learn to relate to people. And relate to people of the opposite sex is very difficult. Now, in these few days, I will talk about marriage too. But I'll briefly say this, the difference between male and female. Male and female has a big difference because God created them different. But there is a reason. God created man interested in doing things, in project, in action. God created women interest in relationship, in feelings. So women like to talk about feelings and like people to listen to them. Men generally don't want to face feelings. When they have feelings, they say, leave me alone, let me just stay quiet. I'll go somewhere and think about it, I'll sleep over it. I will forget about it. Men usually, usually, not always, like to avoid feelings. And then men wants to solve problems. If the wife says, oh, uh, someone yelled at me today, the husband will say, uh, forgive, forgive the person. Don't worry about that, no problem. Solve the problem. But the wife doesn't like that. The wife likes what? The wife likes someone to know her feeling. Oh, I know you must feel bad. Oh, the person yelled at you, makes you feel very unhappy. I'm sorry about that, that makes you feel un so sad. But you might say, That's, why do I have to do that? The point is, let me tell you, both men and women's quality are from God. But we all have sinned, so we fall short of the glory of God. How come God has both of these qualities? God is the quality of a man because God has purpose. God will accomplish His purpose. That's the main quality, generally. God wants to have action. At the same time, God cares about feeling. You talk to God, say, oh, I'm unhappy. God will listen to you. God will comfort you. God will come to you in a gentle way to move in your heart, to take away all the sadness and the burdens. So God has this quality that He gives women and has a quality that gives to men. So. As a man, if you want to get married, be ready to listen to your wife. If you don't listen to your wife, very soon your wife will begin to nag and say complain. But if you listen to her, why should she tell you how she's unhappy? Like my wife told me what happened to her every day. Every day, you know, we try to talk on the phone. And then she tell me, oh, someone mistreated her. Now, I don't have to say anything about the other person. I don't have to condemn the other person. I just listen to her. Oh, it must be difficult for you. That makes you unhappy. That makes you hard for you. And then I soothe her. I comfort her. See, I respond to her feelings. Yes. If you are not prepared for that, you notice that your wife begins to get angry at you. You don't listen to me. Every time I tell you something, you just tell me what to do. And you don't listen. And then every day there will be fights. Has that happened in your house? Yes. And then the wife tries to talk to the husband, the husband, because his quality is not to listen. And she talked, and then he said, what she said itches my ear. It's so long, you talk so long. Why do you have to talk so long? So the women have to get used to not to talk so long when you talk to the husband. You just tell as little as possible and prepare him for that. You say, today I want to tell you something that's unhappy. I want you to share my feeling. I just want you to share my feeling. And I'm going to tell you what happened. So, husband and wives have to be trained how to respond to each other. Men respond to the feeling of the woman. Women respond 
to the needs of quietness of the men and the need to be supported, to be appreciated and don't nag him and don't say you're nothing, you're nobody, you, don't, you are not good. Both of men and women need support and encouragement. But women want someone to talk. So men, if you're not prepared to listen, don't get married. But I know in Africa, generally, women don't talk much. And also I know that your dinner custom is very different from ours. Generally, the men eat separately. The women and the children eat separately. So there's no chance to talk. Now in almost everywhere else in the world, many places, the whole family eat together. It's a time to talk and support each other. So that's family life. And that's what God wants to have this relationship. So I say, if you're not prepared, you just want a woman, I say in a very honest way. The man just wants sex with the woman. You just want a wife who is quiet, don't say anything, just have sex and then cook and then do all the things, clean up the house and then don't talk anything else. I will tell you, there's no such woman. All women want to be listened to. So I'm just telling you very briefly the difference between men and women. Do you agree with that? Yes. Okay, now continue. Next question. Um, why is it difficult to change negative thinking people to positive? Negative people with negative feeling to be positive feeling? Because that's what the Bible says. Can the leopard change his spots? Can the leopard change his spots? If the leopard can change his spots, then you can change. Because people are just hard to change. The only way to change is that we have a close relationship with the Lord and the Lord changed the person instantly. And I try, always try to do that. Pray for people, they touch by God, and I tell them, God is loving you, please remember that. Please respond to God and really love God, and then your life will change. But many people come for prayer, pray for me, pray for me, see what happens. Your heart is not ready. <laughs> Be open. God is so beautiful. I want to respond to God. I want to love God. I want to obey God. I want to serve God. See, you see that quality in me because I'm changed by God. Only that way, I'm willing to change. And that's why I can listen to my wife and listen to my members when they have suggestions to me. So, it's hard to change. So, don't try to change people. I'm saying, your family members, even some church members, we can teach, like preaching. But when you try to guide them to change, it's not easy. But we can guide them step by step. Do you treasure your life? Do you believe God is good? Do you believe God is almighty? Do you want to let, let God change your life? To guide them gradually. And sometimes they'll listen to you and change. But some people are not willing, then some people you try to change and they just yell at you. Okay, now, someone you do good to the person, uh, that person do good to you and then he announced. Well, this person for sure, he's a proud person. He want public acknowledgement of what the person has done, what he has done or she has done. You know that this is not a person to make friends with. Now, I hope you will say, then I have no friends. Then you will, I, I hope, what I mean is, I, I'm sorry, what I mean is, I hope you won't say that you have no other friends other than that. What I mean is, at least you have some simple people, maybe in a church, who are more simple, have friends like that. If someone is always announcing what they've done good to you, it's better not to have friendship with that person. Now, don't say that to the person. You just be nice to him. We continue to be nice, but we don't expect friendship. We don't expect the person to help. We expect to help, she will announce again. Okay, and then, okay, a, a pastor involved in demonic, okay, of course, leave the church, leave the house. The point is, how can we change a person? As I said earlier, some people is hard to change. If they already are demonic, it's very hard to change. There is no way to guarantee the change. But you can pray for him and ask for a time how God can change a person. But some people, if they are already in the uh, uh, demon 
relationship is very hard to change. So we have to realize that it's better. Let me tell you, some people are so hard to change. It's better to change some other people. Spend your time changing some other people. These people who are too stubborn, you can try to change, but it will be too difficult. So for me too, I put more time in the people who are willing to change and I train them for ministry. There are some people who are always lazy and weak, always have problem. Now I try to counsel them, but I don't put all my effort in them. I put more effort in the people who are willing to change because these people can change the whole church. That's biblical. Jesus spent more time with the disciples. He trained the disciples more so that they are ready. Okay, and then, how about pastor not preaching? Where you are now? I just, very short, very short. I can finish. I can finish. That's a little problem. Question. That's a question. Okay. A little problem. Now let's assume, question. You, question. You, question. You are a pastor. Eh? You as a pastor. Let's assume, please come. This man is your wife. You marry him, marry her legally. As a wife, two of you living in the same house, and she discovered that you are a demonic man, playing with medicine, playing with everything. You abandon the woman, go into another place, living in another place. Now the man, the, the man, man is the pastor, the, that has the, the pastor. demons. Yes, the they have demons inside him. Okay. That he do all kind of demonic operations, and the woman will see it. He do some ritualistic services. The woman will see it. And when she discovered, when the man discovered that the wife is watching him, he part from the house, go into another house, leave that woman in the same house. When he's ready, he come to have sex with this woman. Who, who have sex? The same pastor. He come back to this wife to have sex with, he go back to where he's living. Now leaving this legally woman that is married legally, what would be the position of that woman? Okay. My suggestion in this case, as in adultery, if the husband or wife has adultery, the other person can divorce him. And in this case, if he's a demon, it's the same serious thing. Although it's not adultery with another woman, but it's the same serious thing, even worse than that, because he will have demons, carrying demons. So I would, in this case, suggest a woman to divorce him to be totally cut off from him because any connection will bring demons. Now that's another question. Then, then we have to ask God to help. But then you ask me the question. The question is, if the person is in demonics or if a person is, is a thief, stealing from people all the time, beating people up, killing people, the wife has to divorce him and go away. Serious crime, people committing serious crime. The wife has to leave, cannot stay together. That's, that's, you know, even though the Bible didn't say that, but then just from my move of the Holy Spirit, that doesn't make sense if the person has connection with de demons, okay? Now, pastor's not living what he preached. Then I'll say, he doesn't believe, he doesn't know the fruit of salvation. So he has problem. For me, I just say for me, I would not follow such a pastor. And I cannot work with such a pastor. There's no way. So I'm just saying in a simple way, if the pastor himself has problem, serious problem, not small problem you always see. For instance, some pastors still have anger. That it's hard to find a pastor without anger. But if he try to overcome that, that's fine. I mean, I don't mean it's fine, but it's, it's better than other things. But if he has committed adultery, the pastor committed adultery, and then he doesn't have the fruit of salvation, I would not want any connection with him. There's something wrong with this pastor. So that's my answer for that. Okay, how about forgive? We forgive all people, but it doesn't, we make, doesn't mean we make friends with them. Now, two things. I forgive them, but I don't have to be their friends. In my heart, I let go. I let go, and I can bless them. 
I ask God to bless them so that they have a good Christian life and one day can stand in front of God and go to heaven. I pray that. But I don't necessarily have friendship. When I see him on the street, I will say hi. I will say hi and I try to bless him, but I won't connect with him. I will not connect with him if the person lives in sin. I will still forgive him. Okay? Now, two sisters that one put the other in jail and then the other one never forgive. And then the, what happened is, the other person who doesn't want to forgive, what happened is, God will not forgive her either. But she said, the sister has done such a terrible thing to me. So she herself has to repent too. She has done something wrong. That's why her sister put her in jail. If she hasn't done anything wrong, she will not be put in jail. So she must have done something wrong. So this sister should also repent. And then also have compassion on the other person. And she might have too much anger, so it put me in jail. And have compassion and then bless and forgive. Because if a person cannot forgive, then she herself can lose salvation. It's not worth it, right? Yeah. For us to be angry with anyone and don't forgive, it's terrible because we can end up in hell. There was one African pastor who did not forgive his wife. And then he had a car accident and went to heaven and then went to hell. And he gave a testimony in a Reinhard Bonnke's meeting. And he went to hell and then he, he went to heaven and then went to hell and then the angel showed him all these people who were in hell. And then the angel finally said to him, if your book of life is closed today, you cannot, your place is here. He said, how come? And the angel said, because you did not forgive your wife. When you cannot forgive her, then neither will the father forgive your sins. And this pastor really repented very sorry. And the angel said, okay, God gave you a chance. You can go back now. And he went back and told the people about this story. And all of them repented and went to ask people to forgive and forgive other people. But many people don't take this seriously. When we don't forgive people, it can be very, very serious. And he, actually, the Bible has many warnings. Like Galatians chapter 5, verse 19 to 21 about this lust. All this fruit of this lust, we have to be careful. Because this can cause us our eternal salvation. So... She, when she understands the sister and understands her faults, then she can start to have compassion on the sister and start to forgive. And only then, then she can have the blessings of God. Okay? And then the question is, um, okay, now, my friend is doing the wrong thing, but God continued to reveal to her, tell her about her sins. Why is that so? But that's the compassion of God. God always give people a chance until they die. Now sometimes people don't get a chance, but God let them have the chance. God, if they repent before they die, they still have a chance. So how come some sinners still hear from God? Because God wants to speak to them. God has compassion. God is not like people. People say, he has too much sin. I don't want, you know, I don't want to do anything with him. Let me tell you this. I said earlier, if someone is a sinner, I will not be his friend. But I will watch for a time I can change him. I will watch for a time I can help him. If one day he come to me and say, I'm sorry for what I've done. I will say to him, I'm happy for you. God is happy for you. How can I help you? So anytime, even though I don't make friends with him, but anytime he has repentance, I will be very happy. So we have this heart, always to accept sinners. Even when they don't repent, I still want to bless them. And they repent one day, I will accept them. So in our heart, we always open up and we don't ask why God you still open up to them. Because God has compassion and want to forgive them. And this last question, if, if someone is under demonic attack, what's the way out? The way out is first, have a close relationship with God. Believe that God is loving and full of grace and live in the presence of God all day long. 
just this, already the demons will start to leave when he has a strong presence of God. Number two, take care of sins and different problems. Negative thinking, negative feelings. Now all people who have negative thinking, negative feelings and sins continually have the danger of having demons attack. So it's not worth it. If someone is bad, it's not worth it to be angry with them. So put down this worry, put down this negative feeling and thinking and, and so that we can be clear of this uh, uh, sins that Satan will hold on to to attack us. And then the third thing is, in the strong presence of God, in Jesus' name, cast out the demons. But spend more time loving God, spend more time staying in the presence of God, and take care of the problem. And then sometime we can drive out demons. And also in the church, it's easier to drive out demons with the pastor. Oh, there was one more question that I was in a group. In a group that sister said that her daughter doesn't listen to her. And so what happened is, when this sister talked about that, the sister have some frustration too. I want to say this. If your family member, your children, your family member have problem, if we have frustration, we cannot help them. So first, put that in the hand of God. It's God's work. And if I'm peaceful and full of peace and joy and love, I have a chance to change. So the first thing is change ourselves. Then we don't carry the burden, even if the door is not listening. We don't carry the burden. Then we have a chance to change the daughter. And then what can I do? What, what is a good way to counsel her, listen to her, and tell her you are important, you are precious. One day you can be a great person. God loves you. And going to school is important. Do you want to go to school? Do you want to learn? Or do you want to be just spend your time playing? And one day you can do nothing and your life will be very miserable. Do you want to live a miserable life? And then Satan will take away all your things. Do you want to have the strength of the Lord to guide them? And not to say, you do this, one day you'll be a beggar. No one will want you. You will be a failure. You know, this doesn't change people. Do you believe that? Yeah. So, have peace first. Accept the person. Now, when the person is your family member, you have no choice. You have to be the friend. Outsiders, you can say, I don't want to be their friend. But in the home, you have to be. And then you be nice to them and gentle them to them, and there's a chance they can change. So I hope that this question answers will help you. And so first, have the peace. So go home today and have the peace of the Lord. Have the comfort of the Lord, stay in the presence of God, and take care of different problems in your life. Now, your homework today, this is the last homework, last assignment, is to how to handle a difficult person in your life. How to handle, how to handle your life, your peace, and how to handle the other person. How to handle your heart, your inner peace, and handle the problem of the other person. Now, so this is the number, assignment number five, right? This is assignment number five, and this is the last one. Four. Oh, four, number four. Okay, this is the final assignment. Because I'll look at it, and it's okay, then I'll give to Bishop, and then Bishop will give you the certificate. Okay? God bless you all. Hallelujah. Amen. The what? No exam. Just this. I mean, assignment. Okay. How to handle a difficult person first in your heart? How to handle a difficult person first in your heart? How to have peace? How to have the love of the Lord? Wow, this person is so difficult. And a second is how to help the person. Find ways to help the person. And uh, first you describe briefly about this person, this difficult person. Who is that person? And then how can you have peace and love and joy while having this person? And next, how can you help him step by step? You cannot help the person suddenly. It's step by step.